Welcome, ladies. Super excited for another night with she. So we're gonna start uh, with a little surprise that happened last week. So she owns, she builds, she invests, she is me, she is you, she is all of us. So super excited that we made it to the big screen and we're just sharing our mission to help 1 million women create generational wealth through real estate while fostering personal, professional and spiritual growth. So thank you ladies for being here, for being part of this mission. Because it's a ripple effect. If we are doing good, if we are living to our uh, best version of ourselves, we help everybody around us. So thank you for being here. Uh, we're live on Facebook. Turn on your cameras. We want to see you. Uh, disclaimer, uh, we're not financial advisors, we are not CPAs, every investment has a risk. Everything that we do is just with the purpose of helping you grow personally, professionally, and spiritually. Uh, this time we do not have any speakers, but when we do, we do not endorse any of them or any of their services. Uh, so do your own due diligence. Uh, a little bit about uh, Massive Capital. She was brought to you by Massive Capital. So Massive Capital, we are a vertically integrated company. We have uh, $200,000 uh, million dollars of assets under management on the multifamily side. We have properties in Texas, Georgia, North Carolina, and Denver. We also do new construction for retail spaces uh, with our sister company, Realty One. What does that mean to you is that we have a wide portfolio where you can invest your money, either in multifamily that offers more cash flow or on the triple net that just appreciates more and it's really good for retirement accounts. Um, if you want to be part of that, book a call with any of us. We will be more than happy to help you or just to get to know you more. The more we know you, the more we can help you. We also have our coaching program, uh, uh, the coaching program where we have people under our wings doing deals, part of the wits, uh, you know, just doing the deals with us. This is uh, the way I describe our coaching program, this is just like if we if we're gonna teach you how to swim, we can tell you go watch one hundred videos, or we can tell let's jump in the pool. We're gonna be next to you. So this is kind of like the analogy that I like to use to describe our coaching program. That is all hands on deck, and we're alongside you're doing deals alongside with massive capital principles uh we have deals uh where you can invest your money or your retirement account we do not sell anything but we do ask you if you're considering investing in real estate uh book a call with any of us look at our offering uh, our offerings um uh, Right now, we have one open for accredited investors in San Antonio, but we have others that are for non-accredited investors. So you need to have a relationship with any of us. So book a call with us. Uh, it's not going to cost you anything. We're not going to sell you anything. We just want to help you. All right, let's get it started. Let's celebrate. <laughs> let's get the four of you light started. <laughs> Maria, I'm going to pass it on to you.
Thank you. All right. Well, I like to talk about financial freedom and what that means to me. And I know that we've shared our story before, but I kind of wanted to pivot uh, for what happened with me last week. Last week, I was on vacation. It wasn't a vacation, but I do want to share. I um, I went to church camp and I know that sometimes we don't always talk about um, religion or where we're going, but I volunteer with high school ministry. And that means that I went to camp with high schoolers, which was fun. <laughs> and I mentored kids. And, uh, and not because I'm not bragging. I just, I went because I have a passion to help kids. And um, I was going to share this at the beginning of the week, but I wanted to see like how it went before, before I shared it with you guys. There was 133 of us that went four hours north to, to Michigan. And while I was there, I found out that all of these students are really going through a lot. We live in a really, really, I thought was a great community. And um, every night we end up sharing things with our with our church and our group. And, and about you know, 40 kids stood up and said how much they're suffering with mental illness and how much they've been going through with um with their lives and their families and and what they've been going through and i i was able to sponsor two kids to go this year and that's what financial freedom means to me to be able to give back to those kids to find a community where they're going to be able to grow and and find other friends and other kids who are gonna help them when maybe they don't have other people who can. Mental illness is huge right now. Um, I didn't think it was as big as it was, but it totally is, especially when you're sitting around kids who have a huge smile on their face and then they stand up and talk about an experience that just knocks you off your feet. So um, that's why I'm involved in this. And that's what financial freedom means to me. And yeah, I was able to sponsor two kids to go this year, but next year I want to sponsor like 12 or 500. I don't know, but that's what it means. It means that I can work hard and I can, I can have these properties going and I can give back to those kids, or I can maybe help someone who wants to go into sharing their story all the time. Maybe they want to go into ministry. You know, there's no money in that. Maybe I can help someone do that someday, but that's what financial freedom means to me. It gives me the opportunity to really give back to those causes that maybe people aren't thinking of. So that's that's what last week was for me. It it was a lot. It was a lot of growth. It was a lot of helping. It was a lot of a lot of not sleeping, a lot of no air conditioning. But that's okay. But it was just a lot of time spent with um with these kids who are going through a lot. And that's, that's what this is all about. That's why we do this. Yes, we talk about doubling your money and how you can leave your jobs and do all of this so that you can, you know, make all this money, but we're doing it so we can help people. That's, that's what this is at the end of the day, is to help people and to get people on the right track. And that's what I got to do last week. I got to help people find a community where they can support each other and find someone if they ever need it. So that's why I do this. And that's what financial freedom means to me. It means that I can give back to the communities that need it. So that's where I was. And sometimes I forget to share when I'm giving back and when I'm doing something that, um, cause I feel like I'm bragging about it. So I feel like I forget to share, but that's what financial freedom um, means to me. And I'm glad that I got to share it with everyone today. And I hope that maybe that inspires someone else to share why they why they do this and why we are in real estate. Yes, it's fun to talk about, but why we're doing it. Thanks, Jess. No, of course you inspire us a lot, Maria. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I actually can relate a lot with you. Uh, this is a dilemma that I had for the longest. Uh, and I mean, I still struggling with that where I don't share a lot of my religion, how involved I am, or all the things that I do in my community, or, you know, I, here's one thing, I always, every day I pray uh, yeah. to God that you, he uses me as a bridge between him and what he wants to deliver to people, you know, and sometimes it's service, 
Sometimes it's money, some others medicine. Sometimes it's just a call, a smile. Just, you don't know. I, you know, I pray every day. And of course, he, he gives me a lot of projects and I just keep it to myself because I'm like, this is between you and I. And one day I was talking to one of my fr uh, one of my friends at church and he was telling me, I, I get it that you this is between you and God, but you never know who you're inspiring by sharing what you're doing. Uh, so it's kind of like a dilemma. I at the same time, I get it. Uh, or especially because, you know, like we're very real estate driven and we're creating all this financial freedom and you know become a multi-millionaires and all that and people don't really see the other side of the why so it, it is very um I don't know I don't even I can't even find the word um uh, to describe it but it, it's just like should I share it or not? Right. But just what what I can tell you right now by you sharing this, it inspires me to just go and continue and do more. There is so much help needed outside and I'm guilty that I'm always living in my pink bubble and, you know, and when I step out, I realize of all the help that is needed. And, you know, like, of course, on ministries and church, but just within our family, we like our family, friends, mental illness is a real thing. Um, yeah. And so many other things, you know, that's only just one of the causes of, you know, this, the things that are going on in the world. But um that's why also um, I hardly believe like if you are at your biggest, at your best version of yourself, you can't share that with others. If you're not okay, you're not going to be able to serve everybody who needs you and impact everybody around you. So that's why like I'm so passionate about she because we're becoming the best version uh, of ourselves. And after that, like, the projects that we have in our hands, like we, we're just doing better for yeah. our communities, for our partnerships, for our families, for everybody around us. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, of course, you know, Maria and I, of course, I mean, I just shared like, uh, that's of course a big why of me. Uh, but I wanna share a, a different uh, perspective on financial freedom for me. Uh, to me, it's also just having the freedom to work where you want to work, with the people that you want to work, doing the things that you want to do. Uh, I, I always think like, I'm so grateful that I was able to create a business that pays me or keeps a roof under my head while I do this real estate thing, you know? As you know, this real estate is a long-term play. This is not a get rich quick. This is, most of our investments are like five years until we can cash them out. So just pretty much like working for free for somebody or in a partnership, of course, not everybody can do that. And I'm just so grateful that I can do that until now. Uh, and eventually, of course, I know all the sacrifices uh, that I'm doing will pay off or the knowledge, you know? I always say like working on the things that nobody can take away from you. Cause I know if, you know, things go sad, whatever, like at least the knowledge, everything that I have learned on all these partnerships and these real estate deals, everything that I have done on all these businesses, like have helped me grow so much. And I can take that over and over again. And, you know, yeah, we can lose it all. Yes, there, we, nobody has a crystal ball, but if we lose it, do we have the skills to build that over again? So uh, that's financial freedom for me. 
being able to make the decisions to don't work with you don't want to work with just because you have to or being stuck in a job where you're miserable and you don't find your purpose just walk away from anything like a, a toxic relationship or whatever you know like all of us are in different scenarios and the fact that we can do what we want like last week you were talking while Maria was living that I was <laughs> having a completely different experience. I was in New York, <laughs> but that's also comes with financial freedom. Like the fact that, so uh, just to give you a quick uh, background, uh, when my dad first moved to United States, he moved to New York. So he was working his ass off, you know, saving money and all that. And then he moved to Mexico, save money, moved back to Mexico, started his businesses and the rest is your story. And now I wanted to give him the gift for Father's Day to take him to New York and just see New York from a different lenses. And, you know, take the family and just enjoy it was so emotional, the whole trip, uh, especially at 9-11. My dad had a, a friend who, who died on the 9-11 attack. And just seeing him, like, like we actually went to LeBron's because that's where he used to live. And we drove by the apartments that he used to live. And it was just, like, shocking, you know? But I was so grateful that I had the opportunity to give that gift to my dad and I'm like everything is worth it you know all these sacrifices all this hard work all this everything that we're going through it's worth it and you know the fact that I can show my family life through other lenses or I can give them experiences like that uh on my mom's birthday, I took the whole family to Disney. Maria helped me. Whenever you, the plug here, whenever you're going to Disney, you need Maria. <laughs> trust me. Uh, but That's all those friend. experiences uh, just fill my heart. And my big why is like, one of my biggest is like, my parents did such a big sacrifice living in Mexico, moving here. If I don't do anything great with my life, like what was that sacrifice for? So now that I can do something that I can just return a little gift for them, it's just amazing. So I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> I love that you said, but I'm going to go back because even Brooke put it in, Brooke put it in the chat, being in control and being able to, to take control of your finances and know that if you're in a situation that you don't want to be in, you can walk away from that and know that you know what to do. You understand it and you know that you can, if you're in a situation that's not great, you can make that decision to go away. You don't have to stay somewhere that isn't good for you. And you know where to go. So yes, Jasmine and I were both gone last week. I don't know how Massive Capital just didn't fully implode without both of us there. But we both had very, very different, different weeks. But it was cool. It was cool that we both had different experiences. And our whys for last week was, di was different. But it was cool that we got to do that. And I love that finan financial freedom could be used in so many different ways. And it's just so cool to do that. And I'm glad we get to share it because as women, sometimes I feel like we don't share that. Yes. We, oh, we, you know, like we're so humble or we're so, I mean, it, it's just a, I mean, personal, it's like, I don't brag. I feel like sometimes I feel like I'm bragging about stuff yeah. or, you know, especially if it's like, you know, service or right. charity It's like, no, 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 this is between me and God. And, right. And, yeah, but it was definitely an amazing experience and it, it completely different, but both are in the root yeah. of, you know, financial freedom. All that. right. So now we're going to open it for you guys. We want to hear what does financial freedom mean to you. Um, 
just share uh on your mind because if not then jasmine and i are going to keep talking and you know <laughs> yeah so candace is traveling and brooke is at brooke the airport. <laughs> but we want to hear you guys um tell us a little bit about your or we're gonna start calling names <laughs> I mean, I know McGenna has something to share. Oh, I saw her in New York last week. But of course I do. I mean, why <laughs> would I? Exactly. <laughs> I am. Uh, <clears throat> Shirley's laughing. She's like, God, never fails. Never fails this one. Knew it. Knew I, um, I'm i having dinner and have been pretty much glued in into the shares I miss you, ladies. I haven't seen you, Maria, in forever. And Jazz, so good to hug you in New York. And nice to see Shirley here and all these other fabulous women. I love that it's an intimate space where we get to share about financial freedom journeys and, and things that we're not necessarily comfortable with. I mean, financial freedom is uh, <clears throat> it's a huge term. And and uh, I don't think there is that correct definition for it because it's ever evolving. Like it's every day. It could mean something completely different to to a person depending where they come from, what walk of life, what experience they have. I um <clears throat> I also did something very very bold this past weekend. So I kept it a secret for about three months. I um I've always wanted to participate in a pageant competition like Miss Albania or Miss New York or Miss something and oh, finally yeah. yeah there are no restrictions anymore right regardless how you look how tall you are now every woman who in my opinion is uniquely beautiful they can showcase their beauty their confidence most importantly right and their um securities and insecurity so it's it's above and beyond the the physical and to get to experience that was a phenomenal thing for me but long story short i because work hard i invest and am somewhat financially independent i get to give back to my parents and my brother in a way that would make them happy because if we are showing up in the world every day, being of service to others and forget ourselves in the process, that is not a cool thing to do. The important thing to do is to start internally, take mm -hmm. care of yourself, mental health, physical health, emotional health, and then you can be a much stronger source to the world. So because I was able to, to afford tickets, afford the dress, afford the, <clears throat> the shoes and the makeup and everything that goes with it I said what the heck I'm gonna go and become a, a Miss New York USA contestant I mean all you have to be was a woman I, and I checked myself in the mirror and I said mm -hmm. I think I am a woman and I think I qualify <laughs> that, that was <laughs> Because that was the only qualifier for me. If you're a woman and if you identify as a woman, <laughs> all woman boo, yes. <laughs> so I pretty much applied to become a, a you know, Miss New York USA contestant. I was approved in March. I wanted to surprise my family. So literally they found out when I walked on that stage, that's how they found out. The entire trip was, I'm working the pageant on the red carpet. I got some tickets. You guys should come to Albany. I got them to remove my sash when I greeted them at the lobby of the hotel so they wouldn't see me. Becoming, being one of the contests, the security couldn't recognize me because I put my hair up. Like I had to do my thing. I know this is live stream. Don't copy me, you people, when you hear this, please. Do not do this at home. Do not do this at home. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, put the boys in one room I took mom in the, in my room I was with a roommate so she moved out because we all had to leave on Sunday after the pageant so literally I'm like mom I'm gonna put makeup but you go ahead sit down and I'll see you in a little bit because I'm helping the girls with their dresses and whatever like I was like god 
I mean, I kept it a secret for three months. I could keep it a secret for a day. Literally, every single penny that we worked so hard for um, gets to be applied into these different uh, journeys uh, that uh, when you put them as a collective creates this, you know, life that it's ours to claim <clears throat> and ours only. So I, um, yeah, I got to... Uh, to, to give back to my family in a way where they don't feel as guilty as they usually feel when they say, we don't know if we made the right decision to bring you here. Perhaps you would have had a better life back home, but here we are, you're working three jobs or you're working two jobs or you're still hustling at this age. And instead of you doing other things, you're doing this or that. So I pretty much uh, made a decision that... I have in my own hand full authority, full authority to give myself full permission to go after my dreams in a very realistic way. Of course, not all dreams become reality, but I am a realistic person. And that pageant had the qualifiers that, you know, as I said, all you had to do is be a woman and identify as a woman. It doesn't matter how short or tall you are. And I love that. They got to see that I am making my dreams come true one dream at a time. So in a way, the message is, yes, I am grateful that you sacrificed, that you brought us here, and I'm doing something about it. Because my dream is that, and that's one of many. For someone else, for Jasmine, it could be something totally different. And it's giving her father that trip back to New York, going back in the memory lane, going back in the past and, and, you know, and feeling a lot more grateful for, for moving to New York, for making the money to go back home so Jasmine could have a better life, so on and so forth. So yeah, something completely, completely gutsy and ballsy, whatever you want to call it. I am super, super grateful that I am mentally healthy heart healthy, emotionally healthy, physically healthy, that I get to do this because just like all of you ladies here at Massive and she and, and Dirty Wire and so many other communities, and, you know, we are these uh, leaders who continue to show up and lead by example. And if we lie to ourselves and we are working hard every day to make someone else's dreams come true and forget about our own, that's criminal and that's hypocritical. That's extremely hypocritical. And that's why I say it starts with you and then you go outwards. So if I am showing up, letting people know that they should go after their dreams, either invest in real estate so you can live passively, so you can go after your dreams much faster, so you can enjoy it better while you have the stronger energy. And if I don't do the same for me, if I don't take my own advice, then that doesn't make me a truthful leader. And because I knew my truth, I had to do something about it. And it is my dream. And it could be meaningless to someone else. It could be like, yeah, big deal. You walk with a gold dress on the stage. For me, it's above and beyond that. It's about the zest, the essence, and, and how I dreamt it when I was a little girl. And no one can take that away from me and vice versa. Whatever your dream is, you're the only person that gives it full power and authority. And you should be the only one that takes that power away from it, but nobody else. So I leave you with this message today. Go after your dreams. One dream at a time. Surround yourself with people who are also chasing their dreams and not building someone else's alone. And remind your friends when you see them that there's just being givers in a very much takers world. Bring them back to earth. Let them know that, hey, you are forgetting the most important person. You're forgetting you. So that's why um, I'm very excited. And now I get to have another fun fact and say, hey, I participated in the Miss USA, Miss New York USA, which is the most competitive pageant in, in the entire USA. So 
Uh, and of course, according to my parents and my brother, I was the winner because I was the most beautiful girl there. And I agree. I, share I, the story. I agree. I'm going to share that I know the winner, <laughs> obviously. I you agree. Know. And then I'm like, God damn it. The judges were both probably. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Cut this part out. <laughs> but again, I'm glad you shared that. I mean, we only have one life. We got to live it up. You know, we got it. We're doing this so that we can we can do what we're living our lives. Yes, but we're also doing what we what we want to do. We can help people. We can do it all. That's what financial freedom is giving us. It's giving us the ability to to do that. And we don't have to wait until we're 80. To do oh, my that. God. I mean, I promise you, even at 80, you can apply for Miss New York USA. I promise you. Well, McGenna, you're going to 10X, 10X ladies, right? Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm reading the comments. Miguel for president. You're, you're nuts, Brooke. And, <laughs> well, I can't wait. You got to teach me this pageant walk because I'm excited. Oh, my God. When I tell you, like, can you believe it that the Miss uh, New York actually was my next door roommate? So I'm room 802. She is room 801. And our rooms are actually connected with the door. Oh, my God. We're and doing they're- it. They're giggling the entire time to the point where I knocked on their door, like this is two days prior. <laughs> and I'm like, hi. They're like, what? I said, this is your next door neighbor. I just wanted to thank you for not making me use my alarm because your laughter woke me up. <laughs> like they froze. The two of them froze. And like, like, you know, they're so cute. Like they're much younger than me, clearly. And then... um they're laughing and laughing. I said, can you please I said, unzip my gown? Because I can't like like move it. And they're coming inside. I'm like, no, because my door will close. So literally, when she won, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So literally, she's like right next door to me. And uh, I learned from all of them. They're pros. Like these girls attend and participate every single year yeah, for I mean, years and years. That, that's their life. I am like seriously they're like hey how many times have you been doing this I'm like uh once I'm like one and done thank you very much no (laughs) thank you like I'm not here for the crown I'm here for for a lot of different reasons so I became she's like you could be my therapist like I became a person therapist because now they're like shaking they can breathe and I'm like ladies how many women live in in the United States and how many live in New York they're like I don't know, 25 million. And I said, and only 170 are here tonight. Come on, Gosh, ladies. You probably, you probably inspired so many women yes. just being, by being there. And oh, that, that's, that's, that's it, it was right so there. You were so I much love fun. This. But I anyways. cannot wait. I can't wait because when we're at 10X Ladies, which I hope all of you are going because I know oh. Jasmine and I are going to be there. I know McGenna is going to be there. We're going to have to do some catwalk practice because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we've got the winner. And I mean, she is uh, the mean, winner. According to my community, I am. Thanks for your vote, ladies. Of course, of <laughs> course, you are. She is. But I, I am. I'm gonna post on LinkedIn a couple of pictures and more on Instagram. And again, I don't want to take away from all the other women's shares here, but I feel, I feel it's important to to be generous with our shares and why it is that we do what we do. And no dream is small enough or big enough. And some dreams could sound very silly, but guess what? They're yours and you decide exactly. how silly they are. So yeah, ladies, I'm I'm glad that I got to share this uh, cool thing about me because Huge. I've been waiting all my life for that moment and for the shocking and the message behind it where like I wanted to walk on a stage and my parents find out only when they were sitting down and for me to make that one thing happen that's why I was there I was there so I could walk and I could see that's it for nothing else it was like that was the only thing that mattered to me and uh no one can take that away from me so and that's that's the bottom line so next year ladies get ready you're all gonna apply for your own state as miss uh, something in USA Mm -hmm. because the experience is unforget unforgettable Oh my God, no, Brooke says no. Anyways, next next lady, please. I will pause for now. <laughs> we need to have a she candidate. So we're going to keep an eye out for that. <laughs> All right, who's next? Thank you so much, Megan. That was it. phenomenal. I love I that. I love it. This is awesome. 
they're they're this is just so different this is what I love yeah exactly you see like three completely different yeah this is perfect <laughs> story you never know what you're gonna get but all of them go to the same thing you know like exactly. financial freedom like just live to your you know just stay true yourself follow your dreams uh we all have different calls and different dreams so super excited uh brenda you're next <laughs> who's what next is what is the question oh, what does financial question. freedom mean to you Ooh, what does financial freedom mean to me to me it can mean a lot of things, but to me, it's like, how can I help people? Mm -hmm. um, I got into this industry, not just for money. I got it to do mission trips. So that's my why. Uh, I love helping people. But in order to help people, you have to have passive income. So that's why I love real estate, because you get the passive income to go help everybody. And so one question that I heard today is like, who are the name three people you love and you know three names come up right away and they're like you have to love yourself first did you mention yourself when y'all thought of that and that's one thing I'm like wow like McKenna was saying you have to put yourself first and love yourself in order to help people and so I hope that in this that y'all put yourself first and love yourself because look what does she mean to you she builds, she owns, she invests, she is me. And I really have to mean what she means to me, you know. And in order for me to help people, I have to love myself and elevate myself every single day, give my fullest in order to help people. And so that is financial freedom to me, to be able to passively invest to help other people. Brenda, that was awesome. <laughs> Did you practice that? <laughs> <laughs> dang that was good that was really good that was really is always the one who tells me like she's just so good at that stuff sometimes I always love that she's so good at that. she always <laughs> says the right words she always <laughs> says the right words that yeah. was good that was good man you guys are awesome Thank you, Brenda. That was amazing. Um, and we're so grateful that you're part of the massive community, part of uh, she. Uh, Brenda is the chapter leader in Austin. So for everybody who is based out of Austin, uh, definitely you need to connect with Brenda. She is a bundle of joy and sure. plus, yeah, it's just all the good vibes around uh, walking around the world. So Thank you so much because we go back to the same thing. Like what I shared at the beginning was when we are living to our high, uh, to our best, to the best version of ourselves, we can share with others. So we can never uh, pour from an empty, empty cup. That's why we do this. That's why we work so hard on ourselves because then we can share with everybody. So thank you so much, Brenda, for working so hard on yourself, for loving yourself so much, for over overcoming all the things that you've been through to become the woman that you are today and now impacting everybody around you. So thank you. Well, um, good afternoon, everybody. It's always so inspiring to be <laughs> amongst you all. I mean, you are all leaders, hard chargers, like really taking, I mean, just taking initiatives in you guys' life um, and in your financial future. And that really, really inspires me to keep moving forward on my journey, right? Because we're, even though we're all um, trying to build our empire, right? Or not trying, we are building our empires, right? Yes, ma'am. We are also supporting supporting and pushing each other and holding each other accountable. There's no pettiness. There's no competitiveness. There's abundance for all. And that's why I love being in this community in the rewire community and the other communities that I am with, um, that I'm a part of. As you guys started, you know, the conversation tonight, um, talking about, you know, self-care and how I can take care of myself so that I can be the best to others and pour from a full cup, you know, of course, the, the book 
uh, seven habits of highly effective people came to mind with sharpening the saw, right? Um, especially as women, we're always on the go. We're so competitive. We want to do 10 million different things at once because we want to take over the world. Always. And sometimes we forget about ourselves or we kind of put ourselves, you know, on the side. But, you know, what a couple of things have happened to me in my life lately that really put a pause in how I need to treat myself first internally, because this is your temple, right? This is the only house you have, and you have to take care of that first and foremost, so that you can keep building the life that you desire. So this weekend, I, I you know, I traveled to Atlanta uh, for another woman's community that I am a part of. And um, I I went over there. The the, the event was going to be on on Saturday, and I got there uh, Friday. Um, and you know, I had not eaten the whole day. Uh, at night, I ate a little bit of like guac and chips. I didn't have a lot of um, appetite because I'm right now. I'm kind of going through a transformation with, with my body. Like I'm really being intentional about the things that I'm ingesting and like really doing some internal cleansing. Right. And so that has enabled me to not have like these big appetites. Right. Cause I'll be honest with all of you. There was a time where I was emotionally eating right at night. And that was, that was, having me gain weight and just feeling groggy and tired all the time. And I'm like, I can't, like my body is so used to being physically fit, as you know, from the military and everything. And now that I'm like, you know, a retired, you know, lazy vet, as we say, right. Um, you know, sometimes it, it gets the best of you, but um, I, I ate something at night and, and went to sleep. And then I, I woke up an hour and a half later all of a sudden with this huge itch on my back and I just started profusely itching, itching, itching. And then my body just started welting up all over my back, all over my, my chest to the point where it got to my face. I probably will share the picture for, with all of you guys, but once it started getting to my face, I said, I'm I'm going to go to the ER right now because I don't know if it's going to obstruct my my airway. I've had, you know, allergic reactions before but not to this magnitude. So something that I ate or I ingested, my body just rejected it so bad that I started swelling up. So I went to the ER, the lady at the front desk was looking at me like horrified. <laughs> I had black glasses and everything. That's how bad it was. They, they took me in really quick and then they just IV'd the crap out of me with Benadryl and everything else. And thankfully, like an hour and a half from all the, you know, uh, the stuff they were putting on, you know, it started subsiding. And, you know, that's one of the things that really opened my eyes to I have to take my health, my health seriously, like your health. It, your health is wealth, you know, first and foremost, but take care of your body because you never know and listen to your body when, when you're ingesting something, when you're eating something that your body is all of a sudden like, mm -mm -mm, right? Because my body kind of did, mm -mm -mm, and I still ate it or whatnot. And then look what happened, you know? Um, but I just thank God that everything just subsided. Um, then I went to the, to the event and, uh, I mean, I wasn't going to go if if my, you know, allergies were were still bad, but it, it got to the point where I was really scared. My my heart was palpitating really hard. And the lady was like, yeah, your heart is, is going really fast. Um, So I don't know what I ate. And, and that just taught me a lesson to be intentional about the things that you do, the things that you eat, everything. I mean, emotionally everything. I'm, I mean, I'm taking this, this journey really seriously. Uh, but again, you know, when bad things or maybe not bad things, but things that are a challenge happen in your life, there's always the good thing, right? I attend, I was able to get better 
thankfully got me some a couple of Benadryl in my body and went to the event and and I was recognized. I wasn't even expecting that. They they recognized me and I was just so humbled. I was like, what in the world, you know, which which was great. And I was just thanking the Lord to that he was able to help me heal so that I can attend that event. And I get teary eyed because I'm like, wow, um, things happen for a reason, right? And I go back to sharpening the saw, please, ladies, you know, we can conquer the world, but make sure that you are thinking about your mental health, that you're thinking about your body, that spiritually, emotionally stable so that you are, you know, you are looking within yourself, but you, you're that best person to, to pour into others is what I'm trying to say here. Um, definitely, um, you know, I remember just a lot of the things that you ladies are sharing and saying here. It really touches me because I know that I have a community that I can lean on and that I can feel supported and loved when I feel alone or when I feel down, right? I can definitely call Brooke or Maria or Jasmine or Brenda or McGenna, of course. I love me some McGenna. So is is ladies that I can totally say that I can trust and that I can build together, right? We're all building in our own way, but then we come together and then we build bigger and better things. And so that's kind of my my two cents here that I wanted to pour into the community. I love what Miguena said. Hey, don't be afraid to take the leap of faith and be a be a beauty queen at 35, at 40. Why not? Do your catwalk, do your thing. I mean, nowadays there's no <laughs> restraint. Don't be afraid to just be your best self. Love yourself. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. And you're doing the damn thing here. So I love you all. Thank you so much. And that's my pour for tonight. Charlie, I'm so glad you're better. I am. <laughs> I am. But I'm I'm being now intentional about the things yeah. that I'm eating. I'm going to go to an allergist this week Good. to kind of figure this thing out. Yeah. I mean, everything that I learned last week, it's just you don't get to choose your family, but you get to choose your community. And I love that we get to choose. I mean, yeah, we have a small group this week and, and that maybe that's the reason because we're just we're sharing a lot this week. And I know we got a holiday coming up, but you get to choose the community that you pour into. And I love this community. We get to we get to share, we get to grow, we get to build together. And yeah, we're all doing our own thing. We're all building our own empire, just like you said, Shirley. But we can, we don't have to compete. We don't, there's no need to compete. We can all collaborate and work together. And when Shirley's getting an award or when McGinn is walking across that stage, I feel like I'm walking with you. Or like when you're getting that crown, I feel like I'm getting it too, <laughs> okay? all right and when jasmine is in new york i feel like i'm with you so it's it's good i love this community i love i love sharing with you guys and if you didn't share i mean hey i love it put it in it's really hard to share these things though it's really hard to talk about it it's hard to share these things and and it's so share them in the group. I'm saying this just so that maybe I'll do it more. So really, I'm sharing this for me myself. I'm saying this so I'll do it more. Brenda's laughing at me because she she told me to do it more, and I'm I didn't until today. So I'm I'm saying this mostly for myself. So let's let's challenge each other to say it so that we can we can just share because when when one person's winning, we're all winning. I love this community. Yes, thank you awesome. so much, Shirley. And we're, well, we will get into that. As Brooke, seems like you can talk now. Can you? Then I wanted to say, and it is with a very, very, very heavy heart. Um, this was a horrible day for me to pick this announcement with my kids leaving for the first time on a flight. Um, I have to step down from my she leadership responsibilities. So I have to focus on our flipping business because that makes me money. And I, I came down here to Texas 
as a business decision to make money, to be with my mentees, my investors, my partners, et cetera. And I've had a hard time juggling my mentorship and being a, a GP and these calls and the responsibilities that goes with she, which is a phenomenal community and the, and all of the things. I'm like, you know what? The savings are only going to last so much. Passive income is only is only so much. Texas is great because my money's going way further, y'all, way further. But I have to support my family. And I this is a lot harder than I thought it was. We're, my husband is spending hours hunting on these pre-foreclosures. I'm spending hours calling people, trying to help them. And it's crazy, these things that are happening, but it's just a lot longer process. And I've been doing it for a couple months. And the one we had a yes to just fell through. So I feel like if I really dedicate it, I have to cut anything out. This is like a W-2 for me. So I'm still in the community. I'm still going to be on everything because I love the girls and I love everything about this. But because I came here to make money and flipping houses is a lot more work than I thought it was. I have to trim. I had to cut everything out. I stopped my mentorship. It was over in June. I had to cut everything that was not part of this. So it has nothing to do with Jasmine or Candace or some BS drama. You know, it's just I have to support my family. And I brought them across the country. And I have my husband working. And my kids are all here. And I'm not making money. And this makes me money. I really need to focus. So needless to say, it was a really long ass answer. I actually had something that was like 30 seconds long, but having my kids be at the airport and seeing them like walk out maybe more emotional than normal. So I'm here. I just have to support my family, which requires I step down some responsibilities. It's like, but y'all to go back to the real estate freedom and all that other shit. So I don't want to end it like that. Real estate and financial freedom allowed me to retire my husband at 18, 18 months, y'all. Me, I was able to leave corporate after 26 months. Freedom is to not report to an asshole boss. Be able to take the vacation that I want to take with my family. When my daughters have a dance competition, I don't want to ask for permission. I don't want three, four weeks of vacation a year. Kiss my ass. I want to choose who I'm with, when I'm with them, where I'm at. I get to choose the people I get to be with at any time. If I want to sleep in till 12, I can sleep in till 12. If I want to stay up till three in the morning, I'm going to stay up till three in the morning because I'm the boss of my day. That is freedom. Freedom, that is the new wealth, y'all. Don't buy things you have to trade time for. People don't want the money. They want the lifestyle, right? So, Make sure you are not buying things you can't afford. The top three things that make people poor, cars, diamonds, and phones. This is per Forbes. Google it. It's not for me. So that was my, I couldn't get my story because I was at the airport. It was super loud. Um, But yeah, I'm still going to be on the calls and all that. And then that crazy announcement that I had to say, because I didn't want people running their mouths, making assumptions on why isn't Brooke here? Why is Brooke not? Da, 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 da. No, I have to support my family. Flipping houses makes me money and I need to focus because this is so hard. I thought it was going to be a lot because I've been in sales, but dude, two months in and we're still, there's, we haven't closed anything yet. So I have to focus. That's the bottom line. So you heard it from me. Anybody else has anything else? I'm, I'll give you the middle finger, but we're streaming on Facebook because I don't want to piss people off. <laughs> But Brooke, you are you are gonna kill it in Dallas, and whenever we have a she event in Dallas, you are gonna be hosting those as well. So it's not you're not leaving she forever. You're still gonna be with us, and we love you. Thank and I'm not you. gonna cry again. <laughs> I, love you. I know, I know, but we're still here. So I'm still on the call. I'm just not in the leadership role like Jasmine and Maria and Candace. I am in a supportive role now, but. I'm still here because it's everything that I want to be a part of. So, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, she's me, she's you, she's all of us. And, you know, we, uh, I'm so grateful for you, Brooke, you know, before, during, and after she. So regardless of, you know, if you have to step down. I really appreciate everything. And I totally understand your position. 
uh, we'll be around, you know, this is not a good vibe. This is just Brooke saying like, hey, I need to step, uh, step down. And that's, that's also very powerful, you know, recognizing the things that you can do. Like sometimes I'm guilty putting everything on my plate. Yeah, I can squeeze it. Yeah, I can wing it. And it's not okay. And so I'm so proud of you. And uh, I know you're going to kill it. Every, just like every business, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. Whatever you're building, it's going to take a lot of time. Uh, so we're going to be here uh, to support you along the way. And um, we love you. <laughs> we love you so much. And Brooke, Kim wants to know it. what the don't buy things quote was, because you said it and it was so fantastic. What, what, what was the what? The don't buy thing, the, 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 the don't buy things you can't afford or something. Oh, don't, don't buy things you have to trade time for money for. What does that mean? It means if I buy a car, and it's a $600 payment. And if I don't have enough passive income, I mean, just don't buy things. You have to trade time for. You have to work for somebody else for. I left corporate in October, but we have no bills. Some people give me shit. They're like, oh my God, Brooke. I'm like, I told them, listen, you can get, if you can get just for your, your utilities and food and entertainment, if you, and if you have a couple grand of passive income, that's a lot. I get to be free. I have nobody telling me what to do. Am I making what I was making in my W-2? Absolutely not. Nowhere near it. Uh, no, but I don't have bills. I don't have debt. I don't, my rent for my house where we're at right now is paid a year in advance. I have all the time in the world to run this flipping business. So I will not buy stuff that I have to get a job and work for somebody else for. Don't buy things you have to trade time for money for. Listen to what Grant, who's a mentor to all of us, he uses his passive income to buy stuff. So when he refis or sells a property, that money, he does invest some of it and compound it, but he'll take 15, 20% of it himself and buy dumb shit is what he says, right? So you were human, we have to live. But if you can't afford the $500 car, the $600 car payment, don't buy it. Keep the 2015 Honda Pilot that I have because it runs and it's a Honda. It will last forever and I don't have to pay shit on it other than insurance. <laughs> That's it. Oh, bro. Like, so. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It is, Francis. I'm glad you put that. Freedom is the greatest blessing of all. And right. Brooke, that's it. You just you just gave it right there. The best definition of freedom is you you can do it. You have it. And I'm so proud of you. And thank you I for choosing you. you. I love yes. you. And you cho you chose you. Thank you. I might cry about it, but you know. So <laughs> love you. Sorry. I'm still here, y'all. I know, I know. All right, Jasmine, you have some more announcements for us? Yes, I do have a lot of good announcements. <laughs> uh, so, okay, upcoming events. Uh, we're going to be attending 10X Ladies in Miami in August 16 and 17. Um. If you guys want to join or if you're planning to join, let us know so we can uh, we can toggle ar around. Uh, we're going to be in Tampa with Shirley um, whoop, whoop, whoop. on the 15. Uh, we will sh be sharing all the details, venues and everything um, in the WhatsApp group chat and the Facebook. So, so keep an eye on that. Uh, and then our next speaker, uh, which is going to be the first, the July 16, we're going to have Bina Jetty, uh, coming to us, you know, she owns, she builds, she invests, she's Bina Jetty, uh, super excited to have her. So, um, join us, invite some friends. And I think that's all the announcements that I have today, Maria. Yeah. And if you want to go to 10X Ladies, just let us know. Um, we do have a discount. I know that um, 
I know some people do as well. So just reach out to us in the WhatsApp group if you want to go. I think we can get about $100 off a ticket. So let us know.